All right, I'm back at it again with the Kawasaki VN1500 Vulcan. And um, this thing was running like crap. I did a little earlier video about um, cleaning the air filters, which did help. They were pretty bad. But it's still having a lot of trouble. And um, so I had a mechanic that I talked to that works on bikes for a living. I don't, okay? I know a little, but not very much. He knows a lot, a lot more than me. Anyway, we, he was checking the heat coming off my cylinders from the pipe on the left side, okay? Uh, out of this cylinder, he, he had a, uh, what you call it, uh, infrared heat gun. You could just like a gun, you just kind of aim it, and there's a look like, a light at which you want to read the temperature. And he had the light right around here. And took a temperature reading with the bike running at idle and even revving it a little bit. And then he also checked it right here on this cylinder. Well, there was a big heat difference. So right here, you could almost touch it. Not quite, but I mean, it, it, wouldn't, bur it wouldn't burn you. It was like 200 and, I don't know, 60, 270. And right away that one was already reading like 800 so that's a major difference so um this cylinder which is right here over here right is was cold because it's running lean and uh uh it, well, basically it was being starved for fuel okay and that's what this mechanic was pretty sure was the problem so he told me to uh take off the bowl carburetor bowl which is right here it feeds this cylinder right here and make sure it's clean not 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 plugged up or fouled up make sure your jets are clean so you can actually take it off it's kind of a tight spot but you can take it off without removing everything else and get to that excuse me get to that bowl so here's the bowl i took it off right it's going to look like this it's going to be right here Bam, right? Well, there's two screw slash nuts. Okay, you could use, I suggest using a, uh, and it's number seven. Here, right here. Number seven. Okay, and there's two of them that hold that bowl at the bottom of that carburetor. Okay, it covers the jet. So I remove those and drop the bowl, bottom of the bowl there. And look at this crap. Look at that. See all that? You see all that permatex? Okay, that is the problem. Whatever dumbass, okay, had this bike and rebuilt it or whatever before me, he gooped the hell out of this bike with this whoop, with this permatex, right? And you can't see it now. I already emptied it out on the cardboard, but man, you see all that? You see all those little flakes? That was in the bottom of the bowl of my carburetor. And here's my jet right here. Okay. You can see how tiny, well, maybe on this side, it has a very tiny hole. I would say less than a sixteenth, possibly. And so it's very easy to get this thing plugged and the fuel to stop flowing freely. So I got to clean all this crap off. You see this right here? Look, there's a black O-ring type gasket that fits in here. And it's rubber. And that's what it's designed for. You don't need Permatex on top of that. Okay? All you're going to do is foul your carburetor. So i got to clean this up. Put the jet back in. Oh, and the, and the jet is number 8. And I got that out without removing everything. I did loosen a couple of these bolts that holds this bracket here. So it'll wiggle just a little bit. Give me a little wiggle room because it is, sorry, it's really, it's in your way right here. But, um, let me see. Where is that? Here we go. So I used like a deep socket, but it's not an excessively deep, deep socket. Okay. And it's number eight. And that will remove, that'll fit over this and you can remove you can remove it. it's upside down. It goes in there like that, and you can remove it. This jet, okay? 
So, number seven, socket number eight. Um, you might want to have uh, number seven, number eight, um, open end wrenches too. Even ratcheting would be helpful on one end there. Um, you need some small stuff, you know, get in there if you need help with it. But that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, I did take this out. You know, I don't know what this is. Honestly, I, just, I don't know. But I know it goes in this way. Okay. With that portion facing you. It's kind of offset there, sticking out. See that? That should face you. Okay, when you put it back in. Bam. So it should go in there like that. Which I'll put back in. I, it was in my way from getting my, my ratchet and stuff up in there. The best way to do this job is to land your back so you can, especially when you're pulling that jet out, so you can see what's going on in that carburetor. Bam, there it is. See it? Way up there. Okay. You can see where I removed that jet. Okay. And hopefully this will do the trick and uh, stop uh, that crap from getting in there and fouling it. And hopefully that will eliminate my, um, the rough running. Okay. Okay, so on better inspection, looking at it in better lighting, whatever, um, which I know it's not, you're not going to see that in the video right here, but there's a pocket. There's like a deep pocket in the bottom of this bowl, and there was a lot of that Permatex and crap that was just built up in there, and I couldn't get it out, uh, with, but I used a little pick, okay, and just carefully, you know, loosened it up and got it out of there because my brush wouldn't get down in there. There's no way it would. And then I carefully used this pick and I lifted the gasket out. And you can see it's all gooped up with that crap. So I need to clean all that crap off of it. That Permatex um, gasket sealer, whatever they use. And now this surface here where the O-ring sits in and this surface here on either side of that. Be very careful. Don't score it. Don't gouge it. Use something soft either an old toothbrush or this brass bristle brush which the brass bristles will not score the aluminum because the brass is softer i believe than the aluminum but just you know be careful when you clean it don't don't scratch the heck out of it all right so i got this pretty clean and uh clean as it gets well, I don't know about as clean as it gets, but pretty clean. I'm, I'm happy with it. Now, the perm... Whoops. Hold on. This Permatex... You know, I really couldn't get it off the gasket, um, this rubber rubber gasket, too well without... You know, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to rip it. And, you know, I don't... You can't just run to the auto store and get a replacement. I'd have to order this from Kawasaki if they have it available. Bikes in 95. It's hard to find parts. So I'm just going to drop this back in. I don't think that's going to... It's pretty stuck on there. I'm just going to leave it alone. Drop it back in here. And... Uh, pop it down inside that channel. See if I could work it around with my finger here. Okay. Okay. And pop her back in, see what happens. I want to get that jet. I'm going to get some compressed air and make sure I blow it out real good. Make sure there's nothing at all in there. I can't see anything looking through the sunlight up in the air, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that anyways. Because that's what Dusty told me to do, and he's a good mechanic. So, And then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. See if that other side gets just as hot as the other side. Uh, when it's idling, and it'll tell me that it's running correctly. Okay, so this is known as your main jet, all right? And here's the uh, main jet holder, and that jet, main jet screws in to that, and it's one unit. So when I was showing to you earlier in the video, that's, that's one unit, but it's, yeah, it's the main jet. And then the one that's right up next to it, in that carburetor, Right next to that open hole, see if you can see it. 
that one right there top left corner of the screen that's closest to the one to where the main jet was unscrewed that's your slow jet all right so i'm glad that i pulled that slow jet out which was right next to the main jet because look at this no daylight i should be seeing daylight nothing you can see it right here in the side holes around it right you can see daylight through those holes but the main that main bore pff, plugged man nothing look dark nothing so there's something in there so i'm going to investigate this try to clean it out see if i could uh uh clean out whatever's in there and then uh maybe i'll use a pipe cleaner if i got a small enough one anyway that was the problem that's why that that uh cylinder was starved for fuel right there Well, that carburation clean on the uh, left side of the bike, rear cylinder, it didn't do uh, a whole lot. It's, uh, I mean, it runs okay if you're not getting on it, but as soon as you try to get on it, it starts running like crap. So there's something going on there with the carburation. And I wouldn't doubt if this one's dirty on the, uh, the right side for the front cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, drop the bowl on this and pull the jet and see what it looks like um and i'll show it to you but yeah so this one on the right side of the bike front cylinder carburetor it's way easier to get to you can get a wrench a little ratchet in there no problem they don't gotta you don't have to move that bracket or anything out of the way you can get in there so <sighs> okay so yeah i was wrong you're gonna have to loosen this bracket up here and uh, it's like number eight right here. Then up top of the cylinder, there's a number 10. And then the other side, you're going to have to uh, uh, loosen up that one right there on the bottom. Right, hold on, let me get you a better look. Give you a better look here. Right here. And loosen that one that way. This thing moves around quite a bit and uh, lets you get your hand in there. Now, if you got large hands, you're going to have a hard time doing this without taking off the tank and doing all that. But uh, I got small hands. And then I get this little extension on my number seven for that back bolt. It goes in for the bowl and I'm able to uh, get it loose that way. Okay, again, whoever had this bike before me and rebuilt the carbs and whatever, they, they put this goop on it, right? This gasket sealer. You don't need it. All you're going to do is cause problems for your carburetor. Again, that rubber O-ring that goes in there is all you need to seal it from leaking. Okay, it will not leak. This thing looks doesn't look as bad as the other side was, but there is some debris. There's some real fine sediment you can see it moving around down in there so i'm going to clean this up and uh, pull that jet okay so you're going to hold it up to the light 
I hope you can see in this video. Yeah, it's got something in there. Something really, you know, like I said, this is small. That little orifice is small. Now, the jet holder itself, see, you can see daylight, right? But that's a very large hole. That's just the holder for the jet. The jet's on the end right here. I already got it loose, see? But if you look on this side, geez, there's something in there obstructing it. You, you really can't. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull it off and check it out. Okay, now that looks good. See, see how much of a bigger hole in daylight you could see. Look at that. Right? When I showed you before, it was like half of that maybe. So, anyways, this is the jet. We get better lighting. Oh, here we go. See? There's a little jet. This is stage one. So it's like as big as it gets, I think, for this carburetor kit for your jets. But, um, <clears throat> and then right here, here's the jet holder. Okay, and it's going to screw in here. But you can see how the holder is massive, massive hole, like, oh, probably one eighth, probably an eighth of an inch. So, this is not going to give you the problem, more than likely. It's going to be this little. This little jet because the orifice is like half of that maybe even less a little bit especially on this end right here ah fly go away okay so we're clear there so again this is your main jet okay and it's clean now but i'm gonna check out the slow jet on this thing See how that looks, make sure that's clean as well. And like I had said, it's right next to this one as you're going back towards the, the rear of the bike from the carburetor, inside the carburetor. Okay, so I just wanna point out this main jet, okay, when it's up in the carburetor, you have a number eight. I think I told you that earlier in the video. So it's a number eight deep socket, but not too long of a deep socket, right? And then that'll get this loose from the carburetor. Now the slow jet, you just unscrew it, okay? And you might want to have a couple different lengths of small screw, flathead screwdrivers to do that. Whatever works for you to get, you know, get that out. Oh, we're having fun today. Whoever put this carburetor together, man, they King Konged it, all right? They, they, put, they put that jet in way too tight. It's a carburetor, man. It's not going to hold up the Empire State Building. So I wedged a small screwdriver, the right length, that just happened to fit where it holds it in place. And I have it in the slot of that jet. And I don't think you're going to be able to see it. But uh, well, maybe if I turn the flash on, let's see here. Well, my battery's too low to use the flash. Great. Anyway, I got it wedged in the slot of that. And then I'm going to use um, a pair of uh, needle nose vice grips grab that lock them onto that screwdriver and then um, be able to break it loose whoo I almost gave up but I got that slow jet loose and it is plugged I'm glad I did the effort and got that out now again hold it up to the light you see that you see how you can only see like part of the hole it's like not there's something obstructing it partially obstructed uh, anyway Whew. so I'm going to clean this out clean up the bowl I already cleaned the main jet Put this all back in there, and I'm hoping this is going to clear up it running rough at high high speed when I get on the throttle. Um, if not, it's something more of a different issue or a bigger issue. So. All right, so that carburetor trick did the work, man. This thing opened up uh, on the way to work this morning. I was hammering on the throttle and uh, didn't have none of that, that rough running. It was just smooth. So yeah, that, that did the trick. So thank you, Dusty. And uh, now I'm back riding the bike. Uh, 
without having to uh, wince every time I get on the throttle when it starts popping and running rough. So now it's not and much happier, very happy. So if you have that problem, uh, like I said, drop the bowls on the carburetor, remove the main jet and the slow jet and clean them out, put it back together and should be good.